I'm going to start the presentation from Photoshop today. And, um, you know, I'm just going to point out for anyone not familiar, the, the new Nick Selective tool. We'll go ahead and just open it right up. Uh, I have actually enlarged my cursor here, and sometimes it's hard for me to click around because I can't tell exactly where the point is. So uh, bear with me on that one. But basically what we're going to be doing is talking about Perspective Effects Pro today. And um, oddly enough, I'm going to open up Analog Effects Pro to start to describe to folks um, sort of the difference between uh, two different kinds of distortion, barrel distortion and um, pincushion distortion. There's a, actually a tool in Analog Effects Pro that allows you to add the effect in. The whole point of Perspective Effects Pro is to get rid of it or to correct it. Um, or maybe, you know, since you can adjust it as you see fit, you can actually adjust um, pincushion as well in uh, perspective effects. Pardon me as I'm tripping over my words. Uh, I'm going to just turn off the different filters here for just a second. And um, I want the plastic lens, lens distortion. So, you know, again, I know that there's probably a lot of folks in here who are probably already familiar with this. Uh, hopefully there's a lot of architectural photographers and I, I bet there's also some folks who are interested in architectural photography. Um, we the grouping of images that I have here are um, not highly or heavily produced architectural photographs. They're primarily daylight and uh, primarily shot in a way that needs some kind of correction. Um, anyways, the lens correction tool or lens distortion tool in Analog Effects Pro, just to show this, if I slide the slider over a pin cushion, you can see the, the center of the image is kind of pinched inward, and then you can see the edge is sort of like pulled outward, right? So there's pin cushion. And here's barrel distortion as we go from one extreme to the next. And we're not going to apply this. I just want to give you a visual as to uh, one of the things that Perspective Effects is going to be correcting. In fact, with that, I'm going to go ahead and just click Cancel. As that closes, I'll just point out that Analog Effects Pro is a stylistic um, effects filter or stylistic effect tool that allows you to emulate all sorts of maladies that you'd have with film, basically, um, and, and optical systems, lenses that you might have uh, problems with that you actually might want to add in for aesthetic purposes. All right, so we're back in Photoshop. We're going into our Nick Selective tool. We're going to click on Perspective Effects. Uh, right off the bat, the software is going to launch. We'll see our nice new interface here. And um, what I need to do, so it, it's just telling us that we're currently using Perspective Effects to return to Photoshop. We use the buttons in the lower uh, right corner, save or cancel, and that'll bring us back. We're in Perspective Effects. And um, I opened the raw file from Photoshop, right? It, it opened from uh, my Finder into Adobe Camera Raw, and I actually didn't apply automatic lens corrections because we're gonna use the automatic lens corrections here within perspective effects. And I wanna point that out because otherwise we may be doubling up on um, adjustments to these kinds of perspective effects. Now, first things first, if you follow me to the upper right corner, uh, this first tool is gonna to allow us to fix distortion that pertains to the lens and the camera body. So it's the combination of the lens and the camera body together. And what you'll notice is right now, my software is saying download module. And that's because I don't have the DxO Mark module that is designed for this lens camera combination. So we're gonna click download module. It's gonna go ahead and tell us uh, that this was shot on a D850 with a Nikkor 24 to 70. And that's what we're gonna be downloading. So I click download. Once it downloads, it's going to be hidden away on our computer. It's a it's a just a few kilobyte uh, module that is a you know basically set of profiles that will basically uh, fix any optical issues and distortion occurring because of that combination of the focal length of the lens that I shot at in the camera. Long story short, if we turn off the distortion by basically clicking little checkbox to the left of uh, the distortion label, you can see the before. And then the after, I need to click auto so that it automatically fixes this. Now, um, the beauty of this is that there are all sorts of DxO modules that are, are a combination of cameras and lenses. So if you've got a funky camera and lens uh, that maybe other uh, solutions don't have modules profiles for, uh, you, can, you can fix any distortion that might be occurring because of that, given that the DxO mark has a profile for it. Now, from there, 
I'm going to move into the perspective section here, and I'm just going to click auto. And we're going to ta talk about all of these different tools. But for the most part, to correct a lot of the problems that you're going to see in these uh, images, you can just click the auto button, and it's going to go and fix the issue for you. Again, we're going to talk about these different features in the next few minutes, but I just want to start out with a kind of once over with the interface. In fact, let's just go up to the upper uh, left corner of the interface, and uh, we can zoom in to one-to-one -one if we'd like to. So if I click on that, that's going to zoom us in. And then if I click on it again, um, oh, sorry, I've got to click to fill screen. So in the upper left corner, we're able to zoom in easily or zoom out. Uh, you can also use Command Plus or Command Minus if you're on a Mac, the Control Plus or Control Minus on a PC. Uh, and if you want to see a before and after, so we're looking at the cursor this time uh, in the upper left corner, you can go from the before and the after, and then we can click uh, to add a grid to the image if we wanted to see our photo with a grid, which can be very helpful when we're attempting to um, you know, align or straighten perspective issues. Because one of the main issues that we have when shooting architectural photography, unless you're using a corrected lens, a lens that will correct for this, uh, like a tilt shift lens where you're able to shift it up or down, you're typically having to point your camera back if it's a large building and you're going to get a keystoning effect. And this tool is a really fantastic tool for being able to fix that both automatically and manually. All right, so I'm happy with our perspective. I don't think anything's gonna happen if I click on auto for the horizon, but let's see what happens if we just click auto. It's gotta process it. There's no shift because it was actually pretty well on plane and my perspective adjustment probably fixed the issue. Um, and then one thing that's really an, a nice addition to the Nick collection, and this doesn't exist anywhere else within the Nick suite, so it's worth pointing out, um, is that there's a crop feature built into uh, perspective effects, which is gonna allow us to crop the image however we might want to or need to. And it's got your sort of standard aspect ratios. You can create your own custom aspect ratio as well. And again, you can crop in all sorts of different tools, but this is the first of, in the plugin uh, suite, the Nick plugin suite, where you've got the crop feature. So it's a nice addition. With that, we've basically corrected the image using the, uh, the module that was downloaded for the D850 and the Nikkor 24 to 70. We used our perspective adjustment, and then we clicked on horizon, although it didn't make any difference. Uh, and we're going to click the save button in the lower right corner. What that's going to do is, is it's going to return uh, back over into Photoshop and it will make the adjustment to our uh, original layer of pixels, right? So note that as well. So it's a little bit different than um, most of the rest of the suite in so much as if I want to work in Photoshop with layers, it's probably a good idea to actually duplicate the background layer first because the perspective effects, because of the way that the adjustments are being made, it doesn't do it for us. So this is not necessarily an architectural photo. Um, it is an interior and we have a subject. I just wanna straighten out these lines. So let's take a look at how to do that. Um, we've got our layers here in Photoshop. I'm gonna go ahead and just tap Command J. And that's on a Mac. Com uh, Control J on a PC, I believe. And what that does is it duplicates the, that current background for us or current layer of pixels, Command J. So now we've got our separate layer. I'm gonna click on perspective effects. The software will launch. It will autom, oh, it, apparently I shot this with a different lens. Oh yeah, this was shot with a 14 to 24, if I remember correctly. So I'll click the module again. I actually thought I had used the same lens. It's from the same, uh, different day actually, completely different place. Anyways, the auto adjustment is going to correct for this particular lens. And actually at, at 14 millimeters, I wanna say this, was shot at about 16 or 18 millimeters. At 14 millimeters with this particular lens, there's quite a lot of distortion. So this is a really wonderful tool uh, to, to be able to basically automatically turn on. Uh, let's see what volume deformation does. So we're gonna turn it on by clicking on one of the um, options. And this is the horizontal and vertical. And then um, the second option is a, a diagonal option. And actually, if you look at the diagonal, it's introducing some distortion. The idea of this volume deformation is to try to fix um, with wide angle images, the difference between the edge of the image and the center of the photograph. And I actually have another sort of better image to show for that purpose. But if we turn it on and then turn it off again, uh, you should see a slight difference. 
and the edges should look a little bit straighter. So right now, if you notice some of these horizontal lines here, uh, they're a little bit bent. When you go ahead and click on your volume deformation, it has a, a default setting of the horizontal slider at 100%. Um, if we take the vertical slider and we dial that up some, you can see what it's doing. In fact, I'll, I'm gonna take this down to zero, and then I'm gonna bring this all the way up to 200%, or 200 setting, it's not 200%, but, uh, and you get an, a sense for what's happening here. So if the automatic adjustments aren't doing it, don't fix exactly what you need, or aesthetically you feel like it's nicer to make these adjustments, you've got your horizontal and vertical slider able to do that. Uh, now, one thing that's weird with this image is that I'm actually a little cattywampus off of the uh, door here. I'm not completely straight. So the perspective tool is going to be an important one to use here. I typically suggest starting with the auto adjustment, and that's going to try and fix it for us. I think in this case, it's not doing exactly what I want it to do. And by the way, as I do this, it it's I'm not turning the things on and off very much, and some of the adjustments are pretty subtle. This is actually kind of extreme. But the, the thing to note is that a lot of these little adjustments are what's gonna really help to hone in and take a good photograph and make it into a great photograph. Obviously, you've gotta have good exposure, good focus, the, the subject matter's gotta be on, and you've gotta have, you know, uh, you have to make a decent photograph to begin with, but kind of like sharpening, shifting and changing the perspective in these ways are what's gonna help in a lot of cases, separate a decent photograph with a great photograph. Okay, so let's see what, we're, what would happen if we actually laid out a rectangle on this image. So rather than using the auto adjustment, we'll click on the rectangle. And as we click on that, a couple things happen. First of all, the preview changes, right? And you get a sense for what, what the distortion and volume deformation is doing. It's stretching and adjusting these pixels. So you can see um, where the image area is, where the image is bright, and the area of pixels that have basically been shifted to fix these perspective problems, right? Um, so that's what you're seeing in these darker pixels here. Um, mind you, you can change the line color. Right now the line color is set to white, but if you follow me into the lower left corner here, you can click on that and then you can change the line color to any color you might want. I think in this case, white works, but maybe in certain photographs you'd need to change that or you have a particular um, uh, tone or color of a line that you'd prefer to work with because it, it's higher contrast or works better for your eyes. Long story short, We've clicked on the box perspective, and um, which means we basically need to lay these out uh, in, in an exact manner. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag each one of these corners to the corners of the door if I can find them. And that's one thing that I would I would make sure to mention here. Um, I want to find the right corners of the door, figuring that this is going to be straight. Um, at, in, you know, at the end of the adjustments. And I need to make sure that I'm lining this up properly. Now, this is relatively easy to line up. Sometimes uh, it's not, and you have to hold the shift key. So you hold the shift key down, and you go from a kind of coarse movement of the line um, and adjustment point to a fine adjustment. So if I'm not holding shift, you can see it moves around very, very quickly. Uh, as I hold the shift key down, now when I move my mouse, um, I get a nice, subtle little adjustment. I just need to basically find where. Uh, that corner is. I'm going to guess it's right here based upon the other lines. And we're going to click preview. That's going to make the adjustment for us and click apply. And now we've got straight lines, right? Because we've adjusted our distortion, we've fixed our volume deformation, and now we've shifted the perspective uh, so that in this case, the stuff that's straight is the doorway, right? And the, the problem that I'm running into here is that when I shot the photograph, I wasn't straight on to the door, and I think I was also looking up at it a little bit with this really wide angle lens. So being able to shift these and change them in, in this way is a really fantastic way to kind of clean up, and in this case, make a, a little bit more of a balanced image. So I'm gonna click the Save button in the lower right corner. And um, just, I'm gonna go ahead and rename our layer as well. 
perspective effects so that we can see a difference between the before and after um, we're here in uh, photoshop we've got our layers here i'm going to turn off that bottom layer you can see the before and you can see the after so we've straightened out the image we've fixed the perspective and the deformation uh, that's occurring because of the lens and camera combination and I'm happier with this. And so now what I would do is take this photograph probably into Silver Effects Pro and convert it to black and white, or maybe use Color Effects Pro or Viveza to kind of dodge and burn and add in whatever effects are appropriate. I, I think I actually missed focus in this case. Um, we're at 100%. She's not tack sharp. So I would use Color Effects and Sharpener Pro to get some detail back in her and then um, go in and aesthetically sort of adjust as well. Yeah, I think I front focused because this is in focus. Anyways, not a perfect photo, but that's why we've got to make those corrections. So let's jump over into Lightroom. Uh, we, we talked a bit about the modules that are built into the, the DxO uh, perspective effects. And uh, those are the same modules that Photolab 3 uses. So I'll just point that out as well. Uh, so if you're a Photolab 3 user, it's the same kinds of modules that, that are uh, being applied. Uh, this image, it's, it is an infrared photo, so it's a little bit funky to look at, um, but the, it's the only one that I could find where I didn't have a DxO module for it because the camera lens combination doesn't, doesn't exist, either in Adobe or in, um, in the DxO world. So what we'll do here is show you how to manually adjust this photo so that we can correct any of these perspective issues. From Lightroom, to activate or to access the NIC collection, um, you can be in the develop module or in the library module, it doesn't matter. And you just right click on your photo, go to edit in, and then in the edit in dialog, you're going to have um, all of your different plugins that are installed into your Lightroom. So from here, we're gonna click perspective effects. And um, mind you, one of the things we wanna do, and this is a raw file, so it's gonna make us do this. We wanna make sure that we're editing a copy with Lightroom adjustments, if we've made any adjustments with the Lightroom develop module. In this case, we have to because it's a raw file, um, but I, I just wanna make sure to point that out. Um, these, these settings are, are perfectly acceptable settings. The file format I've got set up here is a TIFF. Um, color space is pro photo, although uh, I'm going to go ahead and just change that to sRGB for now for, for web purposes, although I don't think it really matters while streaming this stuff. Um, oops, what happened there? Oh, my Photoshop popped up. So, and then my bit depth at 16. Uh, I am going to recommend that to, to get the best quality results out of your post-processing um, when dealing with the NIC collection, definitely use a TIFF file and definitely use 16-bit per channel. Uh, wh what it's gonna do is offer you the best possible quality um, as what, what's happening right now is the raw file is being duplicated and we're gonna end up with a separate file in our, um, in our film strip, in our Lightroom catalog. Okay, so. In the upper right corner, you'll notice that this says no DxO optical module is available to correct this image. So I've got to go ahead and just click the OK button. And, and basically what that means is that because of this lens and camera combination, which was a D800 and then a Nikkor 28 millimeter 2.8, that was, uh, it's a, a lens from the early 90s. I just like to carry it around because it has a beautiful quality to it. it works well for infrared, by the way. Um, but it doesn't have a DxO module and it also doesn't have one in any other raw processor that i can find so i've always got to go in and make these adjustments manually myself I'm, and this may be a, a very limited use case because it's likely that maybe you don't use manual lenses so maybe you don't care but you may run into this situation where you need to manually adjust these things so first things first in the upper right corner uh we can't use the auto setting so i'll go ahead and click on the manual setting and this is where you can control and adjust barrel pin cushion and then fisheye distortion and or you can add it in if you want to so you know the the uh idea of the software is both for corrective purposes and then also for um, creative purposes if, if you want to be able to adjust this. In fact, I guess I probably didn't even need to open up Analog Effects Pro at the beginning. Uh, I just figured I would relate that. So um, I think the image is suffering from a little bit of barrel distortion. 
And I think at about 30, I'm fixing it, but we'll take a look at the before and after or turn our distortion on and off. So there's the before and we turn it on and I've got to hit distortion again and there's the after. And I'm pretty happy with that, but my image is not straight, right? So let's move into our perspective. And rather than using the box this time, let's just adjust using um, the two vertical adjustments. So what this is gonna allow us to do is uh, just like the box, lay out these on image controls uh, to shift the perspective of our, uh, of our building. Uh, by the way, this is an old mansion. I wanna say it was built in 1870. It's in Alsable, New York, which is northeastern New York, way up north, and uh, it's actually for sale right now. So oddly enough, um, my, my wife got a Google card on her phone, and uh, she recognized this from a picture. She recognized my picture from the listing, and the house is actually, uh, it's got nine bedrooms and something like seven bathrooms or something, and it's $54,000 right now. But it's in the middle of nowhere, I'll sable, and it is not in good shape. But definitely check that out if you're if you're interested in uh, these historic homes. Now, first things first, I kind of just went ahead and kind of skipped and, and did the work for us. Uh, I want to make sure that I correctly place our on image controls. And I want to make sure that they're on the, in the right area. So as this shifts, it shifts properly. It might be interesting to do this improperly as well, just to see what would happen. But let's see what happens if we fix it. So I'm holding the shift button down. I'm adjusting the corners. We click the preview button, and that's going to go ahead and straighten up those verticals for us. And then again, what's going to happen is you're going to see um, all of the area that's outside of uh, the shifted perspective. So I'll click the apply button. And then from there, if we wanted to, or if we needed to, uh, we could actually adjust these things manually. So we just laid out the um, the vertical perspective adjustments, uh, but we could actually move in and um, adjust vertical. Sorry, let's start at the top. The intensity is the amount of that shift, right? If I bring this down to zero, none of it's going to be adjusted. If I start toggling this slider up, we can decide, oh, you know, it turns out at 80 the lines look better or they are um, you know, straighter. The way to be able to really tell is to turn the grid on. Um, and that looks pretty straight right now. It's actually leaning a little bit. Uh, let's see if we keep shifting it. That looks pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna turn the grid off because it just it kind of confuses me as it's on. Uh, it's hard to kind of get a sense for what's happening, but it is a good thing to have on when you need to look and see whether your lines or edges are straight or not. Um, you, you can then move into your different sliders and we can shift these up or down. So in this case, I don't think we need to make many corrections. Uh, again, for aesthetic purposes, we could go in and affect the up and down perspective adjustment. Right, I mean, this kind of does look like a fun house or a scary house at this point, uh, or haunted house rather. Uh, so maybe it would be a good idea to shift these in a way that are um, less corrective and more creative. Long story short, we've made our adjustments. I'm gonna move on to the next image. So we're gonna click the save button. And that's actually gonna bring us back to Lightroom in this case. There's a bunch more tools that we've gotta talk about. So I don't wanna talk, you know, keep, keep us on one particular image for too long. So I think what I'm gonna do is open up a few different example images that are just very different from what we've seen already uh, and talk about those. So here we've got a photograph by uh, Zach Pezicek, who uh, is a former Nick employee as well. And he had given me this image a long time ago uh, for use over the webinars or for the webinars. It is a PSD file. So it is not a raw file that we're taking in. And so let's take a look at what happens when we take a PSD file in. And, and that might be important if folks do panoramic or HDR images, you may be using um, TIFF or PSD files as your, if you will, originals. So let's look and see what's happening here. Edit in, Perspective Effects Pro. Um, I, I am going to recommend if you can use the raw images, definitely, use raw files because it's going to be, Perspective Effects is going to be able to uh, use the original raw information, the, ex, the sorry, the metadata that's built into that raw file. And therefore it, it's going to be able to automatically make its adjustments as necessary. So 
what's happening here is because this is not the original raw file, it's saying, um, you know, we can't make an automatic adjustment. Do you want to go and open the original photo? In some cases, you cannot do that. And so here's what you would do. You would go in and manually adjust the image. I don't think I need any to fix any of this distortion. I think I just added distortion in, in this case. I also don't think um, I need any volume deformation, but what I do need is a perspective shift. So uh, this time on our door, rather than using the rectangle, we're gonna use uh, an eight point system. And this eight point system is just another way of controlling our perspective shift. Now, th this is going to be the most precise and it's also going to kind of be the most amount of work, right? Because you've got to go and lay out your, your on-image controls exactly where they need to be. Um, and that's not necessarily a problem, but you, you definitely want to know where to place them. So in this case with our doorway, which I, I use these doorways because they're relatively easy to demonstrate on, um, some images, many images probably, uh, aren't going to be sort of as simple as lining these things up on these edges but in this case I'm going to line everything up on the edge of the outside of the doorway and that's going to be what our correction is shifted as or shifted with um, holding the shift button I get my fine control jump that over and the the beauty of this control as well is that because there are eight points I don't have to place them on the corners of the same object. I actually could lay these out on different objects or different portions of the image that I know should be um, straight or corrected. So in this case, I think it's just easy enough to um, place them at the corner of the outside of the doorway. Uh, but again, the beauty of this eight point uh, system is that you can place them wherever you want. It doesn't have to be a box like the previous. Um, example was. Okay, so I've placed the eight points. We're going to click the preview button. You're going to see that shift. It's pretty subtle, uh, but now that's squared off for us. So we click the apply button, and that's one of the examples of how to use the eight, um, the, the eight point control. I don't think we need any other adjustments on this image for correcting, uh, because I think it was shot in a way that, that it doesn't need it. It's quite beautiful. So we'll click the save button. And that's going to bring us back over to Lightroom, and that's that particular feature. All right, so as that shows up, let's jump into uh, another example image. And um, for folks who maybe have seen other demonstrations about perspective effects, this is just a, a really great example uh, to, to use for this volume deformation tool because it's a hard feature to kind of really describe without a situation like this probably and that's where uh, this image was shot on a on, with a wide angle lens very wide angle lens uh, you've got the entire group of people in the image which is fantastic but around the edges of the image uh, there's quite a bit of, of deformedness right so the these edges are affected but uh, the folks in the center of the image uh, look pretty straight as if you were standing there and, and seeing it in person they they look uh to me anyways correct on the edges not so much so we're going to go into perspective effects and just get another or a better example i would say of that volume deformation tool so again this is not original raw file it's an image that's uh, been opened as a i believe a jpeg and all we need to do is turn on the volume and um, click on either the horizontal vertical shift or the, uh, uh, sorry, the diagonal shift. I don't think the diagonal shift is the one we need in this case. I think it's the uh, horizontal and vertical. And uh, again, just to take a look at the before and after, we go from here where the edges are uh, deformed and the center looks good to here where um, people are sort of the correct ratio and shape um, and the people in the center look good as well. So really simple example. This is something that happens all of the time. You're shooting wide angle lenses. Again, this is sort of an architectural photograph. It's more of a group image that happens to be in a beautiful space. Uh, but for the sake of time, I'll just go ahead and click that save button. And uh, what I'm wanting to do here is, is show a whole bunch of different examples of what might happen when you open different kinds of photographs. 
Uh, this photo was shot with a medium format Fujifilm camera, and there is no uh, there's no Adobe module for this camera and lens combination uh, in this version of Lightroom anyways. Uh, so the, the, as software um, keeps developing, developers will obviously um, update the software so that it will work. Um, I, I am one version back because as of a few days ago, uh, there was a big push um, for the, the Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom develop and so on and so forth. So I just wanna point that out as well. So right now, I can't fix this anywhere else, so I have to go into um, perspective effects even if I um, didn't want to. So we're gonna go to edit in perspective effects, edit a copy, software is going to launch for us, and um, I'm gonna have to download the module. And actually, what one of the things I should point out is as we're doing this, if I haven't previously downloaded the module, it means I'm actually kind of working blind on this photo. So uh, let's see what happens when we click download module. So the software has correctly guessed or, or um, understands the metadata rather, uh, the, what, what this was shot on was the GFXS with the Fujinon 63 millimeter. I actually thought it was the 45, but it's a 63. So we're gonna click download. Downloads it, shifts. There we go, voila. So that is uh, all we needed to do. And the beauty of this, again, is that it's going to fix that distortion that's occurring because of the lens combination and camera combination. I think I've said that enough, I'll stop saying it. Uh, the other thing we definitely need to do in this image is click on the horizon. And I'm gonna click auto in this case, see what happens. It does fix it for us. But if we don't like exactly what's happening with our horizon, just like the rest of our tool set here, we're able to get an on image control and figure out exactly um, you know, where those horizons should be or where we should place uh, the line. And in fact, you can shift the angle without even using the on image control. So we can go ahead and just use the slider on the right side. Obviously this is not straight. Um, maybe this is the, what we'd want, in which case you can control it that way. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just zero that out. And uh, our on image control is going to work exactly like it did uh, in the other controls. And so basically you go and click and drag on the on image control, and then we shift to get our fine control. Hold shift to get the fine control as opposed to a course adjustment. Okay, so I've set a new horizon. Let's click preview. That's gonna shift it. I'm actually happier with that because the, down at the in the foreground of the image, it wasn't really shot totally straight. And so now we've fixed the lens distortion and then we've shifted our, our horizon line a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna click apply. Let's just take a quick look at that before and after one more time. So there's the original image. Note, note in the bottom in the foreground, it wasn't totally straight, even though I tried my hardest and there's the adjusted image. So um, good example in this case of when um, there's there's no uh, profile designed for the this camera and lens in other pieces of software, so we're able to use uh, the, the effects pro, sorry, perspective effects to create this effect, to fix our issues. Okay, uh, let's see. One of the things I didn't show you is the miniature effect. Let's see what happens if we open up this image. And um, the miniature effect that's built into perspective effects is a really nice feature uh, for creating, uh, you know, that sort of railroad-esque effect or model railroad-esque kind of effect. Um, works really nicely for, for aerial photography, for um, maybe even miniature. So if you're shooting macro, it could be interesting to apply uh, a blur in a separate way. I've I've actually been really liking this tool in um, on portraits recently. So edit in perspective effects, edit a copy. Um, now, as this launches, I'm just going to point out that it's not likely that you're going to use every one of the tools on the right side of the interface here. It's more likely that you're going to use one or two, maybe maybe all of them, but it's more likely that you're going to use you know, the distortion control and maybe volume deformation for certain images as opposed to others where you're going to have to shift perspective. That said, maybe you've got the holy grail and you've got to use every single tool uh, to, to fix or to maybe stylize the image as you see fit. But what I'm trying to do is just show you the different effects on images where maybe this, these kinds of effects are appropriate. All right, so the miniature effect. Uh, as we click on it, so we click on the tool itself in the lower right corner, 
we have an, another on image control that actually looks different than the on image controls that we've seen previously. So I want to kind of go in depth as to how to control this. So the the first thing is if you want to move the overall effect up or down by its center point, you literally click on the center point and drag it wherever you want it to be. Uh, from there, you can rotate this by moving to one of the inside lines, so either this top line or the bottom line. And if you click on the point here, you'll note it's very small. There's some type that says zero degrees. If you click on it, though, you can start to drag it and you can um, adjust to any angle you might want. So right now we're making these kinds of adjustments and they're both symmetrical and the, the blur is exactly the same amount on the top and on the bottom. In fact, I'm gonna rotate it to be sort of this way, kind of like this diagonal line like that. Uh, and the, the way that you control the blur, by the way, is you move to the outer point that's on the first line towards the center and you click on that you have to make sure to click on it and then you're able to click on your um, blur slider and you can turn it up or you can make it much more subtle i don't have any real specular highlights in this image so i think i'm going to open up another photo and show you another feature that's in this miniature effect but uh, before we do that the adjustment that we're making to the blur is affecting this section, the bottom of the image, and the top of the image in the exact same way, it's the same amount. And that's because by default, uh, the symmetrical blur is on. So let's turn that off for now, and then let's adjust uh, the bottom to have a lot less blur, and then let the top maybe have a lot more blur by separately controlling these points. So again, if you missed that, um, I've turned off the symmetrical blur, and now I'm able to control the amount of blur down here separately from the amount of blur up there. Um, the, the other symmetrical tool that you have, again, is on by default, and it's the positioning. So if you click on that tool, you're able to then drag each arm out individually, and it's no longer symmetrical, so you can create some, some very funky different kinds of effects. And this is the feature that I've been enjoying on portraits because I'm able to kind of wrap a blur around someone's face. Uh, again, we're not actually talking about portraiture at this point, but it's a nice feature for that um, if you shoot architectural and travel and portraits and so on. Anyways, I've turned off the symmetrical effect. I'm gonna show you this blur shape tool that's in the lower right corner, actually on another image. So let's click apply, let's click save venture back over into uh, Lightroom. And if anybody joined us for our demonstration yesterday, I actually used this image in Perspective Effects Pro to demonstrate this exact tool. So bear with me if you saw this already. But uh, what I wanna show you is uh, the more blatant or overall effect of uh, the miniature effect blur shape. So let's turn on the miniature effect. It's automatically gonna create that for us. Uh, we can move this around. Again, the, the defaults in the lower right corner, if you follow me, there are symmetrical positions and symmetrical blurs. We can obviously change that as we, as we might want to. So let's position this maybe something like that. Widen this out a little bit. So the, ed the edge of that building is pretty much sharp. I'm going to increase, actually, let's leave the blur down at 40 right now. See what happens if you follow me to the lower right corner. Uh, what, what we're getting here is the ability to shift the, the specular highlights and how they're rendering um, in, in, in terms of bokeh, right? So right now, we're, we've got a, wow, I can't speak. Right now, we have a circular setting, so it's emulating as if the lens that we were shooting with, its aperture was circular, right? And you can see that uh, registering probably the best right in here, right? In fact, watch that area as we shift. So this is circular, here's circular sharp. So it looks more like a donut and it's a sharp edge to it. Um, if we go to six blades, you'll see that shift and then nine blades. And so that's, that's what that's doing. And it's nice because it just gives us that much creative control over our miniature effect, uh, which can be really quite nice. So I click the apply button, click the save button and it brings us back over into Lightroom. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to cover, Lori. I've got a couple more images in here, but we're coming up on time. 
and we're probably going to have some questions coming in. So why don't we transition to that? Okay. Um, let me ask you a couple questions here. Here's a question for <laughs> you. Where does the perspective module fit into your workflow? Where does the perspective? So, so the perspective affects module. Uh, so is that is I'm sorry. Is the question in regards to the order of operations? Yes. Uh, if yes. so, I'll just answer it like that. Um, you. So it's a hard question because it depends upon the overall workflow that you're working in. But I would suggest that before you start dodging and burning or doing stylistic adjustments, localized adjustments especially, use the perspective effects software and module to adjust the perspective. So a few things that you might do before, maybe like noise reduction um, or it, raw sharpening or possibly global adjustments definitely global adjustments in your raw processor um, before going into perspective effects. Because what's happening in perspective effects, two things, you're typically taking a raw file and making it into a TIFF file. And then the other thing that you're doing is you're, you want a high quality TIFF file that's got its global adjustments for the most part adjusted so that um, as we fix the perspective or shift it, um, we're not going to, um, miss out on textures, details, and, and pixel information. So I'm going to say towards the beginning of your workflow, but likely after you've done your global raw processing. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. Um, here's a question. Uh, can this be used artistically for non-architectural images, example, nature shots, such as macro, et cetera? For sure. Uh, and it's a fantastic tool for that. And, you know, I kind of mentioned that I've been using them for portraits. It'd be great for all sorts of macro images or nature photographs. Um, you, again, you could use it for corrective purposes, which is primarily what this webinar and demonstration was about. Uh, but you can definitely use it for creative purposes um, to stylize the image. We should probably have another um, discussion about that. In fact, yeah. I think in my next webinar, that that might be something that we can do. I've I've forgotten now if it's specifically Color Effects Pro, the next webinar that we've got. So it's it's just using the entire Nick collection. So oh, good. we'll have an image ready there. Um, you know, with with that idea in mind, using perspective effects for creative purposes. Excellent. Okay, a couple questions about location. Uh, the cement building uh, oh. that you showed them uh, was at the Salk Institute. Yes. This this photograph is is the uh, Salk Institute, and I'm not actually in the Salk Institute. I'm I'm looking at the Salk Institute from sort of part of the outside that's closer to the ocean. I didn't use this one as a as an example image. But okay. This is Salk Institute. <laughs> All right. Another question was the uh, where in the U where in New York State is the house the photo which Dan worked on? Oh, yeah. So th this says Lake Placid. It's actually in Al Sable. And it might be considered Al Sable Forks, which is a small, very small town that had a boom era. Um, I believe it was a had an iron mill and a paper mill, um, you know, in the early 1900s. And and this was one of the uh, folks who um, did rather well because of those mills. I don't have the specifics. I read the article, but I don't I don't recall the the details. But if you were to um, search uh, Al Sable, let's say Al and oh, mind you, Osable is A U S A B L E. Osable Forks Mansion. I think it's the it's definitely the only mansion there, uh, and it'll probably come up. It's a beautiful Great. place. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Did you say that you had another image you wanted to show? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, oh, I was gonna yeah. just okay. Yeah, I was great. gonna open up. Uh, I think this one. So let's let's go back to this one. Uh, I just didn't actually correct this one because we were talking about um, let's let's creatively adjust this. So we we talked about how to fix these perspectives, but let's let's shift the perspective um, for for creative purposes, and we will actually add some pincushion distortion uh, to shift that, and it's just going to change the shape of the building, which is technically not correct, uh, although it kind of looks cool. There's zero. Maybe maybe it does need some pincushion adjustment. So um, again, 
I'm going to manually utilize this tool by clicking on this button in the upper right corner. It's the circle that has the lines in it. Um, then we can click on peril, to, uh, pincushion, or fisheye. And the idea is that we're correcting these uh, effects. And a good way to know if you're correcting it is by utilizing your grid overlay. The shortcut for that is G on your keyboard. So you can toggle that on and off if you'd like. Um, now that I've made a subtle adjustment, I think what I'm going to do is actually use a perspective adjustment, and let's 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 shift this quite a bit. So we'll use the eight point because I kind of showed you how to fix the image. What, let's take a look at what happens if we um, aren't our goal isn't to fix an architectural image, but maybe uh, create a more creative effect, which might be good for different kinds of photography. Okay, so we've I've laid out that first line. Um, I want to. I'm going to lay out this next one on a window. So let's lay it out here. And I think what we're going to end up getting is a really funky effect. In fact, I'm hoping this window is not curved, because that would possibly create some uh, interest, interesting distortion. Um, so the, again, what's interesting here? I didn't plan this out. So let's just see what happens. Which is always a fun thing to do for demonstrating brand new software. Uh, let's see. Trying to find the top of the stair. And let's use this building for this one. Click preview. Boom. Okay. So that's going to do some really funky stuff. Now, th this is actually nice to see because it's it's really the perspective control that we're doing here is is basically going to be deleting or getting rid of all of these pixels that are outside of the image area. So you can see the image area that's a brighter set of pixels and the darker area, that's that's what we're gonna be kind of losing, um, if you will. And um, if I click apply, it's going to go ahead and apply that. And it, what it, again, it's doing is it's shifting and stretching those pixels based upon our kind of creative adjustment, which is pretty funky. Um, from there, let's let's see what happens if we uh, click into a manual cropping mode. It's one to one right now. I want to preserve um, I want to preserve my edges a little bit. Like a second ago, before I hit the crop tool, mind you, we were losing the edge of the porch here. And so by uh, moving into the crop tool, it somehow just jumped to a one to one ratio, a square ratio, uh, which I'm fine with. I'm actually going to shift this over a little bit. And what's going to end up happening is we're going to end up with um, uh, some black pixels around the edge that we'd have to fix um, using a clone stamp tool later on. But anyways, what we've got now, as I click the apply button, um, is a creatively distorted image. Again, I don't know if if I would want to utilize this feature for this particular photograph, but I'm able to crop it this way, and I, we're we're emulating really messed up optics. Again, it's sort of like the opposite of, um, of of the idea of perspective effects, which is to help to correct something. Uh, so let's click the Save button. And I'm going to leave it at that, because if I keep messing around with the image, I'm just going to really screw it up, uh, which could be fun and interesting, but probably not the best thing to do on live webinars. Cool. Any other questions that came in there, Lori, that I could take really quickly in the next yeah. couple of minutes? Yep, uh, here's one. Um, do you recommend disabling the distortion panel if it was already corrected in the source application? Uh, so um, if you've made lens corrections in inside of uh, your raw processor um, or your initial software, uh, you, you wouldn't need to use the distortion tool to correct. You could use the distortion tool if you wanted to use it for creative purposes, but you would you would disable that or turn it off because you would have already corrected it in your raw processor. So again, thanks, Dan, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Right,